What I want to talk to you about today is the power of trees, which might seem like a strange concept, but the power of trees and the story of the National Forest and how it's come about. Now, in England, only 10% of our land area is covered by woodland, and that's quite a low area. If you look across at Europe, their average is about 45%. Countries like Finland, even more than 70%. So we have a very low woodland cover in this country. And in the late 80s and early 90s, we asked ourselves, what would an area look like if it had a third of its area as woodland cover? So three times that national average. What would that area look like? And could it even be done in lowland England? We're a very crowded island. Could we get to the point where we're creating the first new forest for a 1,000 years? Well, that was a big idea. It was a long-term idea. And that idea has gradually become real. We're 25 years old this year in the National Forest. And we've created something very, very special. So the National Forest is 200 square miles, an area across parts of Staffordshire, Derbyshire, and Leicestershire. In fact, from here in the Curb Theatre, you're only about five miles from the edge of the National Forest. So it is a, a real green lung for our cities, our major cities across the Midlands. And what we set ourselves as a task was to say, can we create this forest as a driver for regenerating the area? Can we have what we call environmentally-led regeneration? And we also asked ourselves, can we create a truly national exemplar of sustainable development. Well, I'm delighted to say that 25 years later, we think we've done both of those things. So we started from a very, very low base. This is our 200 square mile area. So Staffordshire, out there in the, in the, in the west or in the left, uh, your left, uh, and, uh, and Leicestershire in, in the east. And you can see on this map, 6% woodland cover is where we started from across our area. So below that national average. And you can also see on this map, um, in parts of Staffordshire, Needwood Forest, this remnant forest. And in Leicestershire, you can see bits of Charmwood Forest, again, remnant forest. And the idea was, can we link this by creating a new forest across the middle area? An area that had been ravaged by extraction of coal, of clay, of granite, and, and of other aggregates. So a really heavily industrialized landscape. And that challenge meant that we had to engage with our communities, with our business partners, with our farmers, and to try and engage those to use the landscape in a completely different way. So 25 years later, we've now created 20% forest cover across the area. So we've completely changed the landscape, completely changed how it links together and how it works. And we've turned farmers into foresters. We have a completely different planning system. So our local authorities have changed the way they do planning to encourage and create the forest. And we have communities now. We have a new generation that's growing up in a very young forest. So quite an achievement in a relatively short space of time. But in, in some ways, it's not so much that achievement that I wanted to talk about today. What I wanted to talk about is the way we've done it. It's the how that's really important. Because planting trees actually is quite simple. You know, you, you stick them in the ground, you heal them in, you water them, hopefully they grow. The difficult bit is how do you sustain that? How do you make it work? And Within the National Forest, we don't really just talk about the environment. We talk about sustainability. So how does the environment link to the economy? How does it link to our communities? And getting all three of those to work together has been absolutely critical in what we've been trying to do. So let's start with the environment. And we started with an environment something like this. We know we had heavy extraction, heavy industry across much of our area. And this site here at Sense Valley has been 
completely transformed now into a landscape which is on people's doorstep, so it's very accessible, but it's also a much more attractive landscape. But al also in restoring the environment, you don't just change the way it looks, but you actually change what it does. So this kind of environment is storing carbon, it's slowing down water in the cycle, it's stopping soil erosion, it's cleaning the air and improving our atmospheric conditions. And it's providing a wonderful habitat for wildlife. So it's providing all those fantastic benefits through transformation, through restoration. And what we've been able to do is plant eight and a half million trees to get to that point. And eight and a half million trees equates to about 7,000 odd hectares of land. And if you can't imagine 7,000 odd hectares, it's actually pretty much the same as the size of the city of Leicester. So imagine the whole of the city of Leicester being a new forest. That's the kind of new area we've created. But as I say, it's not just about the environment. Actually, the environment, to some extent, is just the driver. What that's been able to do is transform the economy as well. So here, again, another site with open cast coal extraction. And this site, again, was what the economy was based on. You know, we had an industrialized economy, but all of those industries were in decline in the 80s and early 90s. And this particular site um, is now the site of the Hicks Lodge Cycle Center. Some of you will know this site in the forest. So not only is it providing a wonderful new resource for our communities, but it's also providing some economic development with jobs. It provides cycle hire, there's a cafe there, there's other facilities, there's some wonderful cycle routes. So it's linking in with the wider tourism economy for the area. And what we've been able to do in our 25 years is increase the value of the tourism economy by nearly 50% now across the, across the area. So the tourism economy and the woodland economy are actually where the future lies. And we can't think about the environment and the economy without thinking about our communities. So they have to work hand in hand. And our communities, again, were heavily involved in those industries. And we've transformed that now, not just the confidence of those communities, not just the lifestyles of those communities, but actually now the, the National Forest is the number one place in the Midlands to relocate to. So people are coming here because it has such a high quality of life. So individuals are now engaging in their local woodlands. And the reason they're doing that is because we've created 80% of that new forest landscape with public access. So we're not just creating a forest for the few, we're creating a forest for everyone. And that's really, really critical to what we've been trying to do. So the benefits accrue right across the board. And that really is a central part of what I wanted to get across to you, which is that when you use trees, when you use the power of trees, they actually pay you back three times. So they pay you back in restoring the environment and all those wonderful benefits and services that it provides free of charge. They pay you back by giving you growth in the economy if you get the kinds of jobs that relate to the leisure and tourism economy. And they pay you back a third time by allowing people to access those sites, reducing some of the health burden on the NHS. So trees are really powerful in how they can do that, and they're a real hallmark of sustainability. And that's a word you don't hear very much of um, these days, at least what I would say real sustainability. And that's our mantra, that's our mission, uh, is to try and perpetuate that. And we are 25 years old, but actually 25 years is, is quite a short time in the life of the forest. You have to think in centuries. And those benefits that are we're being felt now are really only the tip of the iceberg. They will multiply up over the next 25 years. So my challenge is let's look at what we can achieve with the environment over the next 25 years. Let's use it more to deal with some of the services, some of the issues that we're suffering as a result of climate change. So flood risk, uh, soil erosion, uh, atmospheric pollution, um, some of the things that we know are happening through temperature increase about shade and, uh, and tolerance and resilience. So let's use the environment to deal with that in a really constructive and intelligent way. And trees can be a major part of that. 
Let's look to the economy and let's grow those businesses that rely on the forest to thrive and actually give back to the forest because of what they do. So our leisure businesses and tourism businesses, our woodland economy and our green economy. Let's grow that in this area so we continue to create a fantastic place to be. And also, let's shift our public services so that we don't deal with acute things at the end of the spectrum so heavily. We can deal with prevention. And some of these things that are happening right now around obesity, respiratory diseases, heart disease, mental health, isolation, all huge problems for our social sector. Let's shift those so that people are working with the forest to reduce the incidence of them at the outset. And that way, we can create real sustainability. So you, as the next generation of business leaders, the next generation of policymakers, I urge you to think big, to think in a really joined up way, but ultimately think long term, think like a forest, and we can succeed with real positive change. Thank you.